Alderman Howard Broken, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. You are the alderman of the 21st Ward. Yes, I am. I'm the ward with the largest uh, precincts in the city, with the largest uh, voting uh, residents, and you're running for Cook County State's Attorney. Is that correct? That is correct. And why would you want to run for State's Attorney? There's so many problems in that office. That is why I'm running. I'm running to fix those problems. I'm running to make it fair for the people uh, so that nobody will be treated as though they're below the law and nobody will be given special treatment as they're above the law. There have been some things wrong in that particular office. There has been a, a, a lot of um, problems with respect to the perception of the office and people having faith and confidence in the administration of justice. Many people don't believe that justice can be had out of that office based on some of the high profile uh, miscues by the state's attorney's office. That is the reason I'm running. I'm running to bring diversity to the office. I'm running to make a difference and, and make a, a, a change in that particular office. So uh, tell me a little bit about your background. Certainly. I'm, I'm serving my second term as alderman of the 21st Ward. As you alluded to, uh, the 21st Ward is, is one of the largest wards in the city of Chicago when it comes to registered voters. Um, we're also a progressive board, and, and, and while I've been serving as alderman, we've been doing a lot of building and rebuilding of the community uh, with uh, some of the first as far as, as retailers coming to the south side of Chicago. We have the first Best Buy. We have the first Lowe's Home Improvement, which is slated to be open in January of this year. Uh, but I'm serving my second term, but not only as an alderman, I've been a special assistant attorney general. I've been an assistant appellate prosecutor. I've been a, 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 an assistant state's attorney. I've been an assistant public defender. I've been practicing law nearly 20 years now. Uh, I have a, a breadth of uh, experience in doing a, a variety of things throughout this county and throughout this state. I've tried every type of case imaginable from felony cases uh, to misdemeanor cases from complex civil litigation uh, to doing bankruptcy and, and foreclosure work. Um, that's my qualifications. I'm, I went to school here in the city of Chicago, the Mendel Catholic High School. I went to Southern Illinois University in, in Carbondale for my uh, associate's degree and bachelor's degree in Northern Illinois University in DeKalb for my law degree. So you're basically a product of the city. Absolutely. I am product of the city uh, and this area. I like to tell people that my education went to the dogs as the Southern Illinois was, uh, mascot was the Salukis and Northern Illinois University's mascot was the Huskies. Well, that's great. Um, one thing about the state's attorney's office is there's not that many uh, blacks or Latinos as state, uh, state's attorneys. You know, uh, assistants. Assistant state's attorneys. Right. What would you do to uh, bring more diversity to those uh, to those offices? We're going to go out and heavily recruit and we're going to fight to maintain the minorities in the office. Out of the ni nearly 900 attorneys, there are only 64 African American and 43 Hispanic attorneys. With a, a, a county that has more than a million African Americans and a million uh, Hispanics, we should be able to go out, find and attract um, uh, qualified minorities to bring about diversity in that office and not just diversity of persons but diversity of thought. Uh, there's a lot of group thinking in, that it goes on in that office and we need to change the culture of the particular office. We know that they're out there. I've seen them. Uh, when I was an assistant state's attorney I left the public defender's office to uh, work for uh, the first African-American uh, state's attorney on the Cecil Part T. But 
as a public defender and in the public defender's office, there's been no problems having, finding, and maintaining uh, good and qualified minorities there. Uh, we think that there's been an excuse as to why they can't find the, the people who are qualified for that office. That office is an excellent training ground uh, for young lawyers to hone in their skills so that eventually they can lead, practice their trade, and make money. So how do you really think you're going to overhaul the state's attorney's office with so many problems? For example, uh, there's a lot of uh, assistant state's attorneys that actually want to leave the, 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 the position because of the lack of uh, money. Well, one, the money issue is a, is a recent issue. And what I mean by that, when I went to the state's attorney's office, the state's attorneys got paid more than the public defenders, and the public defenders were unionized. This situation where there's been a disparity of pay between the state's attorney's office and the public defender's office is a recent phenomenon. It happened under this recent administration, and we're going to change that. We're going to lobby, uh, and we're going to get more money to pay uh, on par and even above with respect to the attorneys that are in that office and doing great work and excellent work. Um, I don't believe that there has been a priority with respect to the disparity of, of compensation uh, in that office. There has not been a priority with respect to uh, diversity of that office. And we're going to move that up and make that one of our priorities when we're elected to that office. And we, we will not see that phenomenon happen again. What about all these uh, people that decide, you know what, I don't want to vote, I'm tired of the system, every time I vote someone in, you know, based, I'm going to say bluntly, I get, uh, you know, we the people get screwed, especially with all these tax hikes with the, with the Cook County Board and the city, you know, the city council. This is an important office to all our people in both of our communities. Uh, unfortunately, minorities are disproportionate victims in the criminal justice system. Minorities are unfortunately a disproportionate number of the defendants in the criminal justice system. Everybody should take heed as to what is going on in this office because there's been some significant injustice uh, that hasn't been addressed. When minorities were tricked and the hope robbed from them by majority contractors uh, pretending and going out, uh, taking the slots, the few slots in the minority set-aside program, it won unfortunately wasn't the state's attorney's office who went after those, those bad actors. It was the federal government. Um, when minorities were tortured um, at the hands of the Chicago police, it wasn't unfortunately the state's attorney's office who went after those people. This is an important office. Uh, for uh, both of our communities. This is an important office for the city to determine who meets out justice. The state's attorney's office determines who gets prosecuted and who goes free. And it is important to have someone in that office who's been able to demonstrate leadership and ability to stand up and speak truth to power. That is how I'm going to turn around that office. And, and that is the things that we'll be fighting for uh, as we go forward. And those are the things that we'll be talking about in this campaign. You were the, the only current alderman that went to the runoff and actually dominated your, uh, the votes. So that means you actually, you know, the community actually cares about you. I went to several of your meetings and you have a real large uh, organization of people supporting you. And they're actually people that, that live in the community. So that might, you know, that means that you're actually trying to change things. Uh, politics in, in my ward is, is definitely a, a contact sport.